this episode being different from all other episodes and that we're not discussing hot topic. I mean, it's a hot topic, but it's, let's just break into it. Mehron. We're aware what happened. 45 Jews trampled on and, and killed in an unspeakable event, in an event that happens every year commemorating Lagba Omer. Lagba Omer, a day that's designed to turn sadness into happiness. That, and internally, the, the struggle behind how do you understand that this, this wasn't any external component, this wasn't an act of terror, this wasn't you know, our enemies plotting against us, this is just something that should have never taken place, something, a complete unnecessary loss of life, and it's very difficult to yeah. come to terms with. Yeah. And that's the conversation. I live in Israel. It's a conversation I'm having with taxi drivers, with people I sit next to on the bus, that it's just overwhelming. And when, when you hear the term mass casualty incident, that's something that's a very common occurrence in America. By mass casualty, you have, th that doesn't happen in Israel. This idea that, that, so there could be such a great loss of life at one point. Right. Unfortunately, we have we have our challenges, and we've had in two thousand one, two thousand one, when the second intifada, there was we I mean, the, bus the bus the bus. bus. I, I I was there. You weren't you you know you weren't in Israel yet, but um I I remember that's how I grew, that's when I that's when I grew up in Israel. I was let's see how old was I? Fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, in the two thousand two thousand two um second intifada, and it was, I mean I I remember Pesach. I don't remember if it was Pesach 2000 or Pesach 2001, where there were 100 people killed in one week, if I remember correctly. You know, 18 here, 30 here, right. multiple attacks a day. Horrible, horrible, horrible. But since then, we haven't had anything like that. And that was, again, like you said, that's an external factor. It's almost like, okay, there's terrorism. There's what to fight against. We know that this is evil being done to us. This is like, there's, that's, you know, sadness mixed with rage. This is just sadness. Right. I think I know we we discussed before, but the idea that it's something that look the the investigation isn't complete and unclear exactly what happens, but but to think it's a case that could have been prevented. Well, you know, it's an interesting thing. I mean, you're right. It could have been. Or maybe it could have been. Maybe it could have been. I don't. I don't know. You know, I, there's a lot of things that could have been prevented. Like my my student Ezra Schwartz when he was killed, right, 2015, November 19th, 2015. So. You know, Ezra didn't want to go. We had just come back from Asia Torah. We had been there for four hours in the morning. We woke up at like 6.30 a.m. He's in his dorm and he's like, Rabbi, I'm so tired. Like, I really don't want to go. And uh, I'm like, listen, it's a chesed. Like, you just had a morning full of Torah. Like, this is such an opportunity to now, you know, practice that Torah, practice those values and give back, right? He was on his way to, be, to go volunteer in, in the gush. He's like, okay, fine, Rabbi, I'll go. And he ran, he made it on the van right before they left. Preventable? Could I no. have? You know, I'm, not, no. I'm not blaming myself. That's not what I'm trying to say. My point is that like Hashem mm -hmm. runs the world, right? God runs the world. God okay. decides. By the way, Ezra wasn't supposed to sit in, his, in the seat that he was sitting. A different kid was sitting in that seat and he had a barat, he had a slurpee. And so the driver was just sitting in the parking lot waiting for Ezra. So the driver goes, you know, to the other kid, he's like, hey, I don't want you drinking that in my van. I don't want my van to get dirty. So he got out of the van. Then a few minutes to, to finish it, Ezra got in and took his seat by the window so that he could take wow. a nap. So it wasn't even supposed to be Ezra in the seat. It, right. it wasn't supposed to be. At all, you know, we, we don't know why these things happen, but we do know that, or we do believe that God, and we know that God, God runs the world. I mean, if you take that out of the equation, then yeah, you could second guess everything. But uh, we believe yeah, yeah, for some yeah. reason. I'm not yeah. saying that people shouldn't be held accountable. People no, should be held no, accountable. No, that's, not, that's not what I'm going. Like, how do you reconcile tragedy that could have been proven? And look, I'm I'm like coming from a complete event management logistics perspective. Trampling should never happen. Like this happens every Black Friday in America. Like you need to set up the appropriate. Like no exit should ever bottleneck. That's it like happened at the Hajj in 2015. Did you see that? I remember. Right. Yeah. It was over 2,000 people killed. In, in in minutes right it's so this is just it's such an unfortunate and then now we need to deal with the emotional side we're not asking nothing's gained by saying who's accountable what you know how are we moving forward what is the appropriate response to tragedy 
You know, and this is, I know you and I have this conversation constantly, you know, un unfortunately, but, but to be able to say communities, working in Jewish communal work, you're no stranger to tragic, tragic events, trauma, death. And it also, it comes good with the bad. Like, thank God we celebrate tremendous amounts of, of smachot, of, of celebrations, you know, but you can't only have good times. So reconciling this, and just just one point, because I think about the reconciliation. But um, this past this past Pesach, I was uh, uh, someone gave an excerpt of Rav um, Rav Goldvich's Haggadah. Rav Goldvich is a visiting Rosh Hashiva in Yeshiva University, and he he says, you know, during during Pesach, we always ask. Um, on this night, we we ask why we, why do we do twice? You know, all the all the four questions. You know, why and and Rav Goldvich has the question, he's like, realistically, we do these things other times also. On Rosh Hashanah, we dip apples and we dip honey. So we're also dipping twice. So why aren't we asking it then? Good question. Like when, so his, the maskana, the answer he brings, he says that we don't ask God when things are good. We only, we only ask God when things are bad, when we're dipping into salt water, when we're, you know, we're eating this unpleasant, unpleasant bread, you know, but when things are good, we don't take the time to recognize. And it, it's, uh, Kava Homer now, I think, I think even more so, where you know, going to this Levaya for Donnie Mars, who's just one of 45, you know, and really reflecting. I didn't know Donnie at all, but to reflect and hear and hear the eulogies, I felt like I knew him. Like to celebrate the good times, the the light this this boy brought to the world and those around him. And to be able to say, like, let's stop every day and say, wow, I'm so blessed. And today I met I met with uh, students in students in the yeshiva. And that was part of the exercise to be able, recognize how many people love you, how many people care about you, and it was it was so powerful. And like I, when on the concept of reconciliation, like I can't reconcile the tragic death of forty five people, but to move my life forward and to be able to ask what was this for, how does this change who I am, it's it's brought tremendous light just in the past couple of days. May their memories be a blessing. Amen. Maybe we want to celebrate better times. Amen.